So attunement practices bring us more into the room where we are. And we can do that in our organizations, in team meetings, in families, how we are with our kids. The attunement in, in childhood education and parenting is so important. Attunement means that we are willing to be present with each other and meet each other exactly where we are. Welcome to Point of Relation with Thomas Hubel, a podcast that illuminates the path to collective healing at the intersection of science and mysticism. In his conversations with visionaries, innovators, artists, and healers, Thomas invites guests into a relational experience that allows inspiration and innovation to emerge. This is the Point of Relation. Hello and welcome to Point of Relation, my podcast. My name is Thomas Hubel, and today I want to take you on a journey to explore attunement. So what does it mean, attunement? Attunement means that our nervous system has a tremendous capacity to feel and sense, not only ourselves, but also each other. And so attunement starts with attunement to myself, so that I begin to explore, wow, every one of us has such a rich inner world that starts with the sensations in our body that we can get to know our body much more. We can get to know our emotional systems much more. We can get to know like the, the, the world of our minds and to be much more aware of our thinking or the patterns in our thinking, our belief systems. We can become aware of that which is aware so, and then once we get to know ourselves more, which we also sometimes call self-contact or attunement to self, and that's a wonderful function to have available when we, when we live in the world, because we are kind of much more trained to be with ourselves. And then this, the same quality of attunement is possible with each other. So when we talk to each other, we actually, when we pay attention and we are open to receive, but also attuned and present with somebody else that we speak to or a group of people or a situation, then my nervous system has a tremendous capacity to, to pick up information so that I begin to feel certain things that maybe when I'm just consumed by myself or in my own thinking, while another person is talking, I'm thinking about other things in myself, so then I'm not very well attuned. But attunement actually helps me to be more present. And then I can be attuned. I can feel your body when you speak. I can feel your emotions while you speak. I can feel how what you say and what's happening inside of you is either congruent or not congruent without judging either one of them. And so we, we come more in touch with that the person is not just a black box that's over there, but actually when we attune more, we, there's a much richer data exchange. So we could say relating the relationship that's really happening right now is like a good internet connection. And when the internet's strong, data flows fast. And the internet is a bit reduced or sometimes breaks down the internet connectivity. So then also the data doesn't flow well. So it's great that I have a lot of data in myself, but I can't transmit it to the world. And then that has impacts. And so the more I can transmit the data, the, the, the potential, the intelligence, the gifts, the skills that I carry inside, I can transmit to the world, the more social agency I will experience uh, and have impact in the world. So attunement is an amazing quality to have more social impact. And attunement creates a sense of safety. So when somebody is disturbed and the friend of yours, I don't know, tells you about uh, difficult things they go through, when you feel your friend and you attune to your friend, your nervous system begins to, in a way, dance with your friend's nervous system and 
the other nervous system recognizes that as safety. So it feels more held, more met, more felt, more seen. And, and that creates much more togetherness. And that is also a great support for people that are in distressing moments to ground, to find new perspective, maybe to see things that they cannot see when they are too stressed. And, and that's an amazing support because when we practice that in our social networks, in our relationships with friends, family, colleagues, we actually begin to create an ecosystem that is more attuned. So my attunement begins to spread around me and becomes an ecosystem of attunement. Because I invite my friends into deeper attunement. It doesn't mean that they have to do it or not, but I am a bigger invitation. And the fact that we create more meaningful, more deep, more intimate moments, connections, that's something that stays with us. Because I think every one of us knows that when we feel seen and felt, and when we have people that are really present with us, especially when we need it, it creates much deeper friendships, connections, marriages, work relationships, because it creates an ecosystem of attunement. And in that ecosystem, we start to live. And we all know if you live in an ecosystem with toxic water, <clears throat> it will affect everybody that lives in that ecosystem. If we create an ecosystem with more clean water, it will also affect everybody. And it's a healthier ecosystem plus healthier individuals so it's it's amazing to invest time into this and and build skills and abilities and and then when we refine it it's it means that we begin to practice with more and more people and circumstances because that's something i can do all over it's kind of a relational mindfulness practice and and it increases the once I feel somebody, then more data can flow. So there's an initial attunement. And then I pay attention. I pay attention to what my body tells me when I feel new. I have to pay attention to what my emotions tell me. I pay attention, of course, to the intellectual information and to the relational information. Somebody when, Sometimes when somebody talks about difficult things, we feel that the person is more in, in themselves. Sometimes when we share, we feel open and connected and, and we don't pathologize these movements because they're important for something. In that person's life, protecting themselves was important. So we don't want to pathologize and we want to respect that and hold a space for it. And that creates, again, more safety, more trust. We don't feel pushed. We don't feel pulled somewhere. We can actually begin to be ourselves. And, and be in the authentic experience. So that's, that's very helpful. And attunement, when we practice it longer, um, also means that we begin to feel and see more. And what I mean by that is that our body is the living record of our lives and our ancestors' lives, and also partly the culture that we grew up in. So our body is the living hard disk of a lot of information, not just what's happening now, but all the developmental layers that I went through and all the layers that developed beautifully and integrated themselves into a mature perspective on life, but also all the layers that couldn't develop that well, that got maybe hurt, wounded, traumatized, and, and they're still living at that age, frozen in time. And all of this, all of what I said, makes us, composes us, including the information that we got from our parents, from our grandparents and their ancestors is alive in us. So when we say we feel somebody, we, there's a spectrum of the person that is really their personal life now and then there is like an elevator, what I call sometimes the elevator of consciousness, all the developmental levels from when the person was born till today is actually here. And we can refine our sensing, our intuition, but also the data flow experience. And like this, we can be with people much more 
precisely. And I often say precision is love. When we don't have generic answers, when we have more tuned answers, when we don't have generic opinions about things, but we really feel situations, we feel people, we feel circumstances, and then we respond to that. That's love. And, and also when somebody is in a difficult time and what happens now actually activates some stress that is much earlier in their life already present, then we are more attuned. We become a more attuned holding space. And, and that's true for our ancestors. Attunement is true for our lives and our biographies, but actually the hard disk has much more data. It's like a library and you walk in the personal layer uh, levels of the library but also you can go into the ancestral levels all the books uh, about our ancestry is there and you know we are growing in a time but this time and many of the things that we say we think we write about actually have been said in one way or the other somewhere in history and and so we, are, we have been born into this richness of all the capacities, the mental, intellectual, societal, technological, scientific, emotional, physical abilities that life has. And so we can be more in tune with that. And so the ancestry, feeling our parents, our grandparents, as our great-grandparents, as our ancestors, opens up a part of our nervous system, feeling that in each other, of course, it needs practice and training. But I'm speaking here about the beauty of how we enrich our life. And when we are attuned, we're also more present because I cannot be attuned and not present. So attunement practices bring us more into the room where we are. And we can do that in our organizations, in team meetings, in families, how we are with our kids. That attunement in, in childhood education and parenting is so important. So as teachers, as parents, as caregivers, as um, kindergarten teachers or nursery teachers, we need attunement. Attunement means that we are willing to be present with each other and meet each other exactly where we are. And so, and then attunement also means I'm attuned as a citizen. I'm a citizen in a society, and that society has certain dynamics. I'm also present to those dynamics. I cannot be present to all of it at once, but whatever life requires of me, I'm, I'm there. And so I become a more present participant and also citizen. And that has a co-creative effect. I see, wow, I have social agency. I can change things in the world because I have gifts and because I have the data connection to the collective. Gifts and the data connection. And if we combine purpose and data connection, we have impact. So social agency means that I can translate my inner gifts into the outer world. And that's creativity, that's intelligence, that's innovation, that's um, contribution. I'm willing to see something in the world I identify it as, because it relates to my skill set as part of my purpose, and I'm going for it. And so that makes us a very kind of lively, creative, uh, innovative participant in our society. And we need that because only together we can change and help develop the world in for us to take care of the burning issues that we have. So attunement, for example, and activism are very important, is a very important skill set, like a combination, because um, sometimes we make enemies when we are very passionate for something. But being more attuned opens many more doors. And so again, I have a passion. I have the data connection, and that's what creates social agency. And of course, not to forget that also on the spiritual level, attunement is a way to listen to the future. When I become more quiet, calm inside, 
um, I can listen to how the future whispers inside, how it comes in form of ideas, creativity, insights, revelations. I'm, and the more I make space in myself, the more I'm, I'm contacting the potentiality, the potential that is waiting for us to listen in order to become manifest as a world. And so I tune into that inner connection that helps me to update myself, to grow. And of course, uh, development doesn't end with our uh, status of being a grown up. We are emerging, developing our whole life. And the more we do that, we stay young, fresh, engaged. As we grow older, we stay more fluid, dynamic. And, and I think that brings a lot of joy. And, and also, of course, attunement is how I identify uh, what really needs my engagement. It strengthens care, how I care about the world, and how, of course, I am important in my life myself, but the world is equally important too. So I find a good balance between how much I'm centered in myself and how much I'm available for the world and that there is a healthy exchange and data flow. And, and I believe that is the quality with which we want to be met. We want to be supported. We want to be supported in our purpose and also supported in the moments when we struggle. And there's somebody who says, yes, I see you're struggling. Come, let's sit, let's be together. Let's look at this together. And so when more and more of us practice attunement, we create an attuned ecosystem. And attuned ecosystems are much more creative. There's less fear, there's less stress but there's more care, participation, and generosity. And I think that's why practicing deeper attunement is important. And this and much, much more, you can also find in my new book. It's going to come out on September 12th. It's called Attuned. And, and I'm sure if you're interested in it, there's a lot of um, great information, practices, and so forth. And yes, let's bring attunement into our life. Let's practice that. That's something that we can start right away with. And we can practice and then see what works, what doesn't work, what's easy, what's difficult. And not give up when it's difficult, but actually see this as the fuel of our capacity that grows and how we are more in tune with our environment and other people. And I'm sure that that will bring a lot of uh, great qualities back to us because same as we appreciate to be really met, other people do too. Thanks for listening to Point of Relation with Thomas Hubel. Stay connected and get updates about new episodes by visiting our website, pointofrelationpodcast.com and by subscribing to the Thomas Hubel YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share about us with your community on social media. Thank you. We appreciate your support.